When I think of this state, it's so sad. Years ago, I was given, thank you very much, but years ago, I was given an award as like man of the year or something from an area that nobody knew and the press said, oh, it never happened. Well, then it did happen. They found out where it was, but it was like 15 years ago. Uh, a beautiful area, but nobody remembered it. Nobody remembered it all. All of a sudden, like through a miracle, they found out it did exist and it was there. And I had the speech and the speech was, don't let them take your automobile industry away. They're taking your automobile industry away. And I don't know why you're doing it. Now, I wasn't a politician. I was an entrepreneur. I was a real estate developer doing great, having a lot of fun, doing a much simpler life than this. Who would think that a developer's life is simple, but it's a lot simpler than this. But I said, don't let them do that, because here I am in Michigan, and I was getting an award, and I'm making a speech. I'm saying, what am I going to say? But I just watched Common Sense. I saw them leaving for Mexico, leaving for China. Do you know that right now, and they weren't building them with me, they weren't building anything in Mexico having to do with cars with me because I said, if you build it, we're going to put a 200 percent. You're not going to sell one car into this country. And, but right now, they're building some of the largest auto plants anywhere in the world ever built. I have a friend that does that for a living. Very good at it. He's the best, I think. And he's actually a contributor, a supporter. But he builds the plants, and I say, you know, I'd like to go see a plant, a really great auto plant. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing technology, amazing what they do, um, really incredible, the, the amount of automobiles they can produce and the size of these things. I'd like to see a real modern plant, and he's the one that does them. And I said, uh, so where would we go? I was hoping he'd say Detroit or someplace up here. But anywhere in this country, I'll take anywhere in this country, right? So will you, my greatest guy right over here. Stand up, will you please? He's so, he's such a great guy. Oh, hi, everybody. We're going to bring him back. We're going to bring him back. We're not just going to keep, you know, you're losing your jobs, the whole thing, but just so they're building. So I said, where would I go? And let's go take a look at a beauty. He said, well, we'll have to go to Mexico. I said, wait a minute, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. In no, I want to know here. He said, here, we don't build top of the line. We build smaller plants. We build, uh, we just, you know, there's just not that kind of a thing. And I said, isn't it sad? He, he feels that, too. You know, he's a... The big ones, you're going to have to go to Mexico. They're owned and built by China in Mexico. And there are a number of them going up right now. And they think... They're going to make their cars there, and they're going to sell them across our line, and we're going to take them, and we're not going to charge them tax. We're going to charge them, I'm telling you right now, I'm putting a 200% tariff on, which means they're unsellable. <laughs> unsellable in the United States. And then you wonder why I get shot at, right? You know, only consequential presidents get shot at. When I say something like that, you have countries saying, this guy, but... Uh, what can you do? You have to do. You have to do what you have to do, right? You have to. We have to be brave. Otherwise, we're not going to have a country left. So what's happening is they're building these massive auto plants, and they think they're going to make tens of thousands of automobiles and sell them in here. No tax, no nothing. It's not going to happen. When you put on tariffs, tariffs are the greatest thing ever invented. You know, I took in. I took in 467 billion dollars from China. Nobody else took in anything. And China's economy is not even doing that well. And, and Biden, you know, they, they have not been able, and Kamala, they have not been able to take those tariffs off because there's so much money. And frankly, if they did take them off, this country would be flooded with Chinese cars. You don't have the Chinese cars. We put a pretty good tariff on. It was going to be lifted at some point. Then we had COVID. We did a And we did a great job. We never got credit. We got credit for the best economy maybe ever. We got credit for having defeated ISIS and having rebuilt our military. Uh, we shouldn't have given, Sarah, we shouldn't have given $85 billion worth of equipment to the Taliban, to Afghanistan. In, in I think, in, I think, the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, that whole thing was the most... When we were leaving, we were leaving with me. I was the one that got it down to the right number. We were going to keep the big air base, which is exactly one hour away from where China 
makes its nuclear weapons. Think of that. One hour away, and we gave it up. We just gave it up. One of the biggest, one of the most, we spent billions and billions of dollars many years ago. The runways can hold more weight than any runway ever built. Think of that. Uh, they're, I think, 19,000 feet long, which is, you know, three times what a normal runway would be. It's, a, it's called Bagram. And we were going to keep that because of China, not because of Afghanistan, one hour away from where they make their nuclear weapons. So that was a good one. We left. We left. And the way we got out was so embarrassing. And because of that, first of all, 13 dead soldiers. I've gotten to know their families. They're incredible families, but they'll never be the same. Many badly injured, you know. Nobody. Sarah, nobody ever talked. always have to say that, number one, and great families, but nobody ever mentions the fact that some of the soldiers were hurt so badly, the arms, the legs, the face, like obliteration. We left American citizens behind, and they're not too happy, I can imagine, but uh, if, they're, if they're living, if they're living. And we also gave them $85 billion worth of the best military equipment, all beautiful, brand new, between the goggles and the planes and the armor-plated cars. We gave them armor-plated trucks and cars and vehicles and so much. And they're one of the largest sellers now today of military equipment in the world. They're selling this stuff. 777,000 rifles and guns. Think of that. How do you, how do you have that anyway? How, who would put that? We have 71,000 trucks and cars. And again, many of them armor-plated. So what happened is when Russia looked at that, they said, we're going and we're going to invade. We're going to go into Ukraine. If that didn't happen, I don't think, and I guarantee you, if the election were a straight election, we won that election. We should have won that election. Everybody knew we won the election. They would have never attacked. Putin, Putin never would have attacked. But the oil prices got driven up at $100 a barrel. He made money. He's the only guy fought a war, and you make money fighting a war. But it got driven up because of their bad energy policies. But when he saw that, and you wouldn't have had, think of this, you wouldn't have had, how different would the world be? You wouldn't have had Ukraine being attacked by Russia. You wouldn't have had October 7th in Israel, where that horrible situation took place, because Iran was essentially broke. They had very little money, and we would have made a great deal with them. All we want is we don't want them to have a nuclear weapon. Very simple. That's all we want. We don't want you to have a nuclear weapon. We would have made a good deal with Iran. They would have been happy. And I think they're going to end up being very unhappy, but it's very dangerous. They're very close to a nuclear weapon. And the other thing, you wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had inflation because inflation was driven up by their bad energy policy. And do you remember your gasoline started going up to 5 and $6 a gallon? And then what happened is they said, oh, we're going to get killed. We have an election. We're going to get killed. And they went back to my policy. So they went back to Well, they went right back to my policy, or they would have, you would have been buying, you would have had $25 a gallon gasoline. So they went back. What they don't say is, though, I would have been producing four times as much. And I took us from third into first place by a lot. But we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country in the world, including Saudi Arabia, including Russia. And we would have had, we would have had, we would have been so dominant in energy. We would have, you know, we were, uh, we were, we didn't need any energy from anybody. We didn't have to protect any other countries in order to get their oil, which we've done for many years in the Middle East. We were energy independent. Sounds so beautiful to say it. We we're energy independent. We were soon going to be energy dominant, and we would have been now having so much money coming out of the energy. We just have the best. We have Bagram in Alaska. They say it might be as big, might be bigger than all of Saudi Arabia. I got it approved. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. I got it done. In their first week, they terminated it. Uh, check that one out. Bagram. Check that one out. It's, it's, th no, think about this. Between Bagram, between you go uh, to uh, Anwar, you, you take a look at the kind of things that we should have that oil. We should have, we would have had a whole different country. But to give up, 
Anwar to give up uh, the, the biggest air base, military air base in the world, and they left it in the dark of night with the lights on, and they did leave the dogs behind. There are a lot of people, they say, what about the dogs? They left the dogs behind. But we would have been, we would have been, we would have been a much different country right now. But we're going to get it back, and I promise you, we're going to get it back with guys like this and people like that. And, Sarah, just one thing. Because this is the world's longest answer to an otherwise simple question, but the difference is I give an answer that's productive as opposed to an answer that is not very productive, right? Like in the debate. But just to, just to end this, I, we are going to, for Michigan, because we want to be a little bit Michigan-centric. Uh, you used to be the capital of the world in cars. Today, you're an afterthought in cars. And I don't know the head of your union. I've never met the gentleman, Sean. I've never met him. But what he's done to your union and what he's done by agreeing to allow this country to say we're going all electric, which at some point they're going to end up taking back that mandate because that mandate is insane. They want to go all electric basically by 2030. And for him, think of this, for him to do that, just real fast, you're right now at 25% of where you used to be and heading south because the electric cars are all going to be made in China and Mexico, but they're all going to be made basically in China. We are going to bring so many auto plants into our country. You're going to be as big or bigger than you were 50 years ago because they won't be able, if they're not willing to build a plant, we don't want their product. And that's enough. That's all I wanted. And it'll happen, it'll happen fast. It'll happen very fast. I think it's safe to say that Michigan is happy that you're going to be president again.